Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Waterbury Board of Education regular meeting at Waterbury Arts Magnet School. We'll begin this evening uh, with a silent prayer. Thank you. Commissioner Hernandez, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Wobb. Vice President Harvey. Here. Commissioner Hernandez. Here. Commissioner Pagano. Present. Commissioner Serrano Adorno. Here. Commissioner Stenga. Here. Commissioner Sweeney. Here. Commissioner Jason Van Stone. Present. Commissioner Tom Van Stone. Present. President Brown. Present. Mayor O'Leary. Here. We do have a, care, a quorum. A number four, Commissioner Hernandez, communications. Motion to receive and place on file communications as listed. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure tonight uh, to ask Jacob Adorno to the stand, please. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Albini, Vice President, Vice Principal. Okay. Good evening. It is my pleasure this evening uh, to be here with Jacob Adorno, who has been the recipient this year of the um, CABE Student Leadership Award. And uh, if you spent any time with Jacob, you certainly walk away with a smile on your face. Uh, he's a true leader. He's our class, senior class president. Um, he has a great attitude. He has uh, always put uh, everybody in a great frame of mind. Um, he uh, always has everybody else's well-being in, in his heart. So uh, we are so proud to have him at Waterbury Career Academy. Unfortunately, we are losing him this year. He's graduating, but, uh, but he's going to make some other people very happy as he goes through life. Um, just remember, keep Waterbury in your thoughts as you go through life, Jacob. You know, we're Waterburyans here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of uh, Kate, and if you would like to come and, and get your award. Congratulations, Commissioner Adorno. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud. Congratulations. Yes, you did. Going around again. Congratulations, Congratulations again. Best wishes. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Adorno, number six, please. Uh, motion to address the regular order of business to hear from the public. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Uh, first, we'd like to hear from uh, Mayor O'Leary. Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Good evening. Members of the board, students. I, um, I wanted to come tonight um, to talk about the Wendell Cross project and um, I wanted to apologize um, to those uh, folks who were disappointed I left early at the last meeting. I had a family commitment that I had to honor. Um, but I have a lot of information but I'm going to try to go through it really quickly. Um, so. The board knows, the parents knows, uh, you know, the project uh, was approved by the uh, Department of Administrative Services. We have uh, Mr. Robert Facito from DAS here with us tonight and the Deputy Commissioner uh, who is uh, responsible for the approval. Oh, and by the way, this, the, the school got approved today. Um, <laughs> 
And uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Costa will be here, as I mentioned, in case there are any questions. But, you know, I can tell you that this has been a more complicated process than most people would recognize. Uh, and the reason is because uh, we changed the scope of the project, and, and we did so because it was in the best interest of the community and the, and the city and the district, which is most important, correct? So we had talked about uh, another uh, pre-K to 8 school uh, when it was uh, being considered for construction. It was Carrington School, uh, which is in a neighborhood kind of similar to Wendell Cross. And uh, uh, at the time, it was uh, Commissioner Jason Van Stone who brought up some concerns about uh, two uh, gr uh, classes per grade. And uh, he was concerned that the school would fill up and be overcrowded quickly. And he was exactly right. Uh, the decision was made to stay the course. We built the school. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. But we've already outgrown it. And um, so obviously we knew we were hiring a new school superintendent this summer. Uh, Dr. Ruffin came in when she heard about the scope of the project and toured the school and looked at the um, surrounding area and the number of children who are technically in the Wendell Cross District but are attending other schools because there's no room. Um, you know, she came up with a couple of things that were bothering her. One, she thought, as uh, you all know, she thought we should um, add another grade, or excuse me, another class per grade. Two, she didn't like at all <laughs> the fact that the plan was to um, do the um, construction while the children were on the site. And quite frankly, after listening to her concerns, and this is someone who has uh, vast experience in school construction projects, um, you know, you think about what could happen and right away mm. you just, it's easy to get your head around that. But we needed to, um, you know, we needed to work with the Department of Administrative Services who has brought a whole new level of scrutiny on school construction projects. And it's understandably so. Uh, most districts in Connecticut, as you know, their enrollment has been declining. And so it's, it's odd to get a request to build a new school, uh, which had been approved for two grades uh, per, two classes per grades, and then now we want to add. So we had to provide a lot of documentation, a lot of support. And, uh, you know, I can't tell you how grateful I am to uh, our friends at DAS because they were very accommodating. They continue to be accommodating. <coughs> And quite honestly, without their support, I don't know that we would have been able to keep this project on time. So after Dr. Ruffin's arrival uh, and reviewing the project, uh, we did approach DAS in the late fall and expressed her concerns. At that time, uh, we were advised by DAS to go out and look for swing space or start to look for swing space in the event that they agreed to change the scope of the project. Uh, I did call directly to the Archdiocese and learned that St. Mary's um, School was unavailable. I did call and tell, uh, find out that St. Joseph's was available. And there was no mention of St. Peter and Paul at that time, folks, because at that time there was no talk of St. Peter and Paul closing. Um, then fast forward uh, to March 12th, I got a call uh, from the Archdiocese in the evening and said that tomorrow morning we're going to announce the closure of St. Peter and Paul School. Hmm. And, um, you know, first I was sad, right? I mean, another Catholic grammar school is closing. And then that evening I was thinking about um, if there would be any opportunity for St. Peter and Paul uh, to be used uh, for swing space. And I called uh, the Archdiocese the very next day and I spoke to them and they said, look, the last day of school is June 15th. There's no possible way that we're going to be able to accommodate your swing space. St. Joseph's is the best option for you. So we got an access agreement to St. Joseph. We, in the meantime, we had the building analyzed by our school inspector's office and others. In the meantime, we had a number of different uh, specialists, both environmental um, and others go into school, and it has been empty for a long time, valid point, but the school basically was in good shape. Now, you might recall that we've used this school in the past for swing space when we built uh, Duggan's school. So at the end of the day, um, you know, we announced on May 2nd uh, that we were going to use uh, St. Joe's. Um, I found out on May 13th 
excuse me, I found out on March 13th um, that the school was unavailable. The one mistake I made, and this is a lesson for all of us, is I should have gone directly to the parish priest, Father Lavornia. Um, so I have done a lot of business with the archdiocese over the years, uh, um, namely PAL and other uh, venues, uh, St. Anne's School and others. And I've always dealt with the Archbishop's office, so I didn't mean to slight Father Lavornia. I apologize to him. Today's his birthday, by the way. Um, and, um, you know, Father Lavornia wrote a letter today, and he, he absolutely agreed that with the Archdiocese that there was no way St. Peter and Paul could have been used for swing space um, <coughs> for this project, uh, at least in the first year. So here we are. And uh, through our dear friends uh, uh, at DAS, who uh, made several visits to the site, uh, both their architectural team and their building committee team, uh, we walked through Wendell Cross, we walked around Wendell Cross, we went everywhere you could go on Wendell Cross, and, and uh, today we got the approval. This is really good news, folks. This is a big, beautiful project. Um, I, I can understand the parental concerns. Anybody would be concerned. There's no, I don't have an issue with that. Um, but what I will say is that there was a neighborhood school that had been closed for many, many years that we opened and is thriving and beautiful, and that's St. Lucy's. And St. Lucy's School and the PAL around it transformed that entire neighborhood. I mean, it really did. And our <coughs> vision, long term, is for this school to transform Brooklyn which has been neglected for a long, long time. They don't even have a park. They don't have anywhere for the kids to really recreate. They don't have any social service centers. They don't have the South End Rec Center. They don't have PAL. They don't have the North End Rec Center. They don't have anything. <coughs> they have Duggan School, but it's limited access, as we all know. And so, you know, we, we thought, and we still do, that this is a good site. The safety concerns, listen to me. They're valid in the sense that there are people on the sexual assault registry, there's more people in Brooklyn on the registry than surrounding Wendell Cross. There's a couple of reasons for that, folks. One is because the population around St. Joseph's is much different than the population surrounding um, St. Peter and Paul. In the East Mountain, 2,200 people live within a quarter mile radius of East Mountain Neighborhood School, or you know, Wendell Cross School, and, um, excuse me, in, um, yes, in East Mountain, 2,200 people live around that school, but in Brooklyn, 3,900 people live around a quarter mile radius of that school. 3,900 people in a completely different socioeconomic demographic, quite frankly. And so while we recognize that there are more people on the registry, we also recognize there is different housing in the Brooklyn neighborhood. But at the end of the day, we will provide the necessary safety and security for those children every day and every evening that they're there. We will. We will do that. And at the end of the day, those children will be in a school that's refurbished and remodeled. It certainly won't be nearly as nice as the school that they're moving into in two years. But the opportunity to learn will be probably better than what they have in their existing building at Wendell Cross. Now, I know many of the commissioners visited St. Joe's uh, today, and I think maybe uh, yesterday. And I didn't hear anyone expressing any concerns about the um, the condition of the school and the quality of the school. But there was a letter that was written um, to all of you concerning um, the possibility of mold. And so the um, Board of Public Health in Waterbury, Mr. William Krim and Tom Salori did a thorough um, inspection of the property and wrote a letter to you, President Brown, uh, stating that the Department of Public Health, William Quinn, and I, Tom Saluri, performed an environmental evaluation at St. Joseph School located at 29 John Street on Thursday, May 16, 2019. I actually would have had them go in earlier, but I just saw the letter that was written 
today concerning the mold. During the, our initial walkthrough of the property, we found no detectable visual indoor mold growth. There was no odor of mold nor mildew detected inside the premises. We also found no visual conditions favorable for mold growth or during our canvassing of the premises. So I didn't really think about the mold issue because I've been in the school and I didn't see mold in the school. We did have mold at St. Lucie's. That was a whole different ball game up there. And of course, we remediated it quickly. Um, but the school itself, I can't say enough things about our school inspector's office, our electricians for the city, our carpenters for the city. They've been working in the school, and they've been really you know, working hard, our painters, to get the school ready and to get the school done. We have um, a lease that is before you tonight that is negotiated with the archdiocese. We're asking you to approve it. It gives us full access to the school and the convent, and it also gives us full access to the parking areas around the school. So, you know, I know there's been a lot of questions, and I know there's been a lot of concerns, and I get it. I absolutely get it. As police chief in this town, obviously, I know people's number one concern with their children is always going to be neighborhoods and crime. But I need to tell you that those concerns the statistics do not support those concerns. Um, you know, there actually is people, I know this may be surprising to those who say otherwise, but the data collected and has been reviewed does not show significantly more crime in the Brooklyn neighborhood of St. Joseph School than Wendell Cross School itself. And in a couple of areas, Wendell Cross um, school has just a little bit more crime in the area of stolen cars and uh, one other category. So I just want to put your minds at ease. I want to let you know that the city is extraordinarily committed. We can continue to work very closely and will continue to work closely with DAS. This has been a, an arduous project, but at the end of the day, we're doing it right. And, you know, we don't want to build a building that we're going to outgrow. We don't want to build a building that will be inadequate before we turn the key and open the door. And so this is why it's been a little bit of an um, anxiety-driven uh, experience for some, but you know, it really will be a showcase in the city of Waterbury, and most importantly, it'll serve the needs of the children in the entire district. Thank you. Commissioners, any uh, questions for Mayor? Commissioner Adorno. Hello, Mayor O'Leary. Um, really, probably not a question, maybe more of a, of a statement. I myself visited with Mr. Clark the, the site today. Um, you know, as a mom raising, you know, four boys in the city, I do understand their concerns about safety. Um, but I do want the public and the parents to know that I personally, in the walkthrough, um, Mr. Clark did address all my questions and, and concerns. I even made some suggestions because, you know, I'm a mom um, and, and working actually, you know, with the students. So I feel comfortable and uh, to be honest, um, and just for the parents, maybe for their self-awareness, it is a temporary move. I know um, accepting any kind of change is a little difficult to, to adapt to, but it is temporary. And I do want to thank Dr. Ruffin for even seeing the bigger picture of the Wendell Cross and, and creating it into a grade, you know, up to a grade eighth. I think that would be very helpful. So I hope they kind of see the bigger picture and what's the really the well-being of our students. Um, obviously, everybody's concerned here on the board and, and for you as well is their safety. And I don't have any doubt that that's going to be addressed. Um, and I know that I was told that eventually when it's done, maybe the parents can take a tour so they can see. But I do see the bigger picture, and I think that we're, we're in good hands. So um, as a mom, I, I just kind of want to maybe, you know, let them know that. I think it's, it's going to be for the greater good of our, of our students. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner Stango. Thank you. Um, Mayor, when we talk about safety and you're, you know, ensuring this, you swear it's the safety of the children there, and I know we can't talk about what actual things that are going to be happening, but I'm wondering if any thought was given to um, perhaps providing an SRO in that school, much like we do with the middle schools and high schools, because of the situation at least to begin with. Absolutely, and uh, you know the city is committed to a very prominent and high police presence uh, in that school, Commissioner Stango, uh, when we first open, and we will. Uh, the police chief will assess it weekly, and there will be there will be a significant police uh, presence at that school to address the parents' concerns. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, everyone. Mary. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Richard Wood. Good evening, everyone. Richard Wood, Avalon Circle, Waterbury. I thought I'd comment on the recent uh, program we had in our school system. We have a competition with the Gettysburg Address amongst the students. And it was last week, part of the past couple of months, but last week we had our final uh, at the Rotella School. And I thought I might comment on the fact that Ms. Henry, who was the principal, exceeded what needed to be done. She made sure the program ran correctly. She filled in the blanks where some of our volunteers weren't <laughs> aware of, which happens. I mean, it's part of the thing. But I'd like to see more schools involved next year. This year, we had 11 schools, Walsh, Wilson, Wendell Cross, Sprague, Rotella, Regan, Maloney, Hopeville, Gilmartin, Generali, and Chase. The thing is that the Gettysburg Address represents a, a teaching mechanism for democracy. And this is something we have to address because we have to start replacing ourselves with people who understand the basics of democracy and the fact that we are a republic and that the different things that go into being a democracy means that we have to fill these seats behind me. There's very few people who have a vested interest here to support what you are about to do tonight. I can see Mr. Stango has another gray hair <laughs> listening to our good mayor give us the facts of life regarding the new school, but it sounds like a good deal and a fair setup for the children. And taking care of our children is our first priority besides being voters. The key element here is that we have to show respect for our children by planning for the future. We have to look beyond next year, look ahead the next 10 years. Most of us will be around, I think. I haven't called Rome lately, so they haven't given me any final figures. But I thought you might like to know that the Gettysburg Address went down well. The winner was superb nice young lady with all the theatrics that go into the <laughs> Gettysburg Address. The thing is that when Abe made that speech, he had no idea the lasting impression it was going to have on millions of people. He didn't, he didn't even realize the value of his speech, and yet it's now something that we comment on, we have competitions on, and we use it as an example of how well do you know America? because we have to go back to the fact we have to replace ourselves with people who know our history. By the way, the fourth estate, I think, is here. And I planted 10 apple seeds last month. And I, I think you might want to figure out where, where they're going to be and what's going to happen with the result. The thing is, you can do the research on it and have some fun with it, but I plan on utilizing those 10 apple seeds very thoroughly. I already went down to Home Depot and I bought a tent. Because, you know, things occur and February comes and you, need, you can't just sleep in a sleeping bag. Which, by the way, we have too many homeless wandering the streets. We have to take some action on that. That's a story for another time. I'll bring that up to the Board of Aldermen. Peace be with you. Dominis Probiscum. <laughs> Until next week, next month. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Uh, Aman Brantley. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Did everybody hear that? There's cars parked in the bus lane that have to be moved. <laughs> Good evening. Could you please state your name and address for the record? Hello. Hi. My name is Amari Branley. 
uh, and I live at 175 Rumford Street in Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay. Hi, my name is Amari Brantley. I'm the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, uh, Waterbury Youths Council. Uh, today I'm here to speak on the issue about uh, school arrest and uh, officers in the schools. Now, I just would like to bring up one fact uh, shortly. Uh, our dear mayor, he spoke on how, or and everybody here spoke on how they would like safety, right? Uh, so can we talk about safety in the future? Can we talk about the safety of our children's futures? Now, uh, we talk about uh, putting police officers already in our new schools. Uh, now, when we have this, do you guys all, I believe, and my organization believes that people uh, at the age of 15 should not have their record be ruined uh, for in 15 years. So a mistake that you make when you're 15 years old in high school, when you are mature, immature, uh, could affect your entire future. So how can we make it safer for our society when we would like to make it, uh, or we would like to put police officers in our schools now? Uh, now I'd like to address myself to our poster that some people from my youth council made. Uh, the name of our poster is programs, uh, sorry, programs, not prison. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have five key issues or some key issues uh, that we'd like to see put or some options that we could see put into school systems. Now we would like to see trained security guards, not officers. So we can look at other surrounding areas and we look at the city of Bridgeport. The city of Bridgeport has actually taken officers outside of the schools, uh, outside of high schools especially, and they put security guards and we've seen that their rates have actually gone down and their statistics have gone down. Now another fact is that we would like to see peer assessment. So instead of being uh, arrested or uh, a part of our program would be peer assessment where they could go in front of our uh, peers that look like them and are a part of their community uh, and we can talk about it that way and we also uh, would like to focus on future first so we would like for everyone to take in the fact of our futures as I spoke about before we would like to think about what would not happen just now what will happen in 15 years what will happen in 20 years what will happen in 25 years due to how we would like to keep us safe now uh, now I would also like to bring up mentors mentors would be a huge part of this program or our program uh, being ran just so that we could see community members being a part of our youth and students lives uh, we would also like to bring up behavior specialists. We believe that behaviors, more behavior specialists need to be put into schools uh, to help fix problems instead of more officers. Now we would like, we believe, now I would like to pass it on to my partner, Brandon Pittman. Hi, my, hi, my name is Brandon Pittman, uh, 53C Memorial Street. Um, my name is Brandon Pittman. I am the entertainment chair for the World Bank NAACP. And I would like to say that I agree with Amari about not having police officers in schools, but having trained security guards in our schools. And that a kid shouldn't be arrested by a police officer and have their, and have their career ruined and be in the system and, j and just have a, a behavior specialist talk to them and programs over prisons, meaning that they should go to a program and talk about how they feel and stuff and work on their anger instead of being just put in the, into the system and thrown in a cell or detention, detention institution. So, yeah. Now I would like to say thank you to the board for listening to us, and I would just like to bring one other fact up. Uh, we hear as an organization that of the diversionary program that is being put in place right now. Although we do believe that the, a program should be put in place right now, we would just like to ask that we halt this program uh, and bring it up on our next agenda to have more community members involved uh, when making such program just as this. And we do actually have Chief Fernando Spagnolo uh, and another offer uh, another. Waterbury, Board of, uh, or Waterbury Public School and member coming to our meeting uh, to help further explain this diversionary program so that we have an all-around view on how the Waterbury Public School system feels about this. Now, uh, thank you to everyone. One more thing. I think that parents and youth like students should have a seat at the table with the Board of Education to have a say on the decisions that are being made. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a wonderful night, ma'am. Thank you. And everyone on the board. And thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank well you. done. Well done. Great presentation. Okay. Could we have a return to the... 
Can I have a motion to return to the regular order of business? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Madam um, Chair, motion to suspend the regular order of business and move item 12 prior to item number 9. Could I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. We're going <coughs> to number 12, uh, Commissioner Van Stone. Thank you, Madam President. Through you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Building and School Facilities recommends that the Waterbury Board of Education approve a lease agreement with the St. Blaise Parish Corporation for property located on John Street in Waterbury, Connecticut, known as St. Joseph's School and Gymnasium, as well as two buildings formerly known as the Convent and a residential structure. Respectfully submitted and so moved. Second. Discussion? Commissioner Van Stone. Thank you, Madam President. And I thank the Mayor for his... Uh, his points earlier in this, um, when we had wrapped up the public uh, meeting last week, obviously there was a lot of consternation there, and it was hard not to uh, feel the issues that the parents were bringing forward. And I think all of us as human beings, and many of us as parents, understood that. Um, and it was something I was grappling with, um, frankly, all weekend. Uh, after having the opportunity to tour the school and having a long conversation with the mayor today, um, Many of those reservations were taken care of. Um, seeing that, you know, keeping an eye on the, the big picture, that at the end of the day, uh, the East Mountain community is going to have a school that they have been long asking for. And in my opinion, a better one that was on the table a year ago um, is a huge opportunity for that neighborhood. And while I agree moving kids from school to school isn't always the easiest, I think the solution that we have found here at St. Joe's, which as I walked through it, was in far better shape than I would have imagined and in much better shape than the last time I was in the building. Uh, the, the group working on that between our staff and some of the city staff right now is doing everything they can to make sure that uh, as those kids come into that school uh, this next school year, they are going to be greeted with all the opportunities that they need to learn. They will be um, in a safe environment, which is something we clearly heard last week. And oh. it will be something that none of us will ever take our eyes off of for their time at St. Joe's. So uh, with that, I will be supporting uh, item 12 today. And uh, I can't tell you how forward I'm looking to eventually opening up that new school up on Hamilton. Thank, Thank you, Madam you, President. I, I want to acknowledge our guests from the State Department of Administrative Services and thank you so much for working with the City of Waterbury. And we're very excited about the project, so thank you very much. Madam um, President, yep. may I call Deputy Commissioner? Yes, absolutely. To say a few words? Yes. Would you like to come up? Welcome to Waterbury. Again. <laughs> Uh, my name is Costa Diamantis. I am the director of the Office of School Construction Grants and Review. I uh, have been working with your city certainly on this project uh, since it was originally placed on the priority list back in 2016. Um, as the community knows, uh, I am one who likes to proceed forward on projects. Even our department has evolved in the course of the last five years. What you may thought the Office of School Construction and Grants was when you've done prior projects, it's changed since then. We are very much a hands-on. We are very much involved in the process that goes on. Um, we request a great deal of information, and I would concur with the comments made uh, by the member of the board who suggested that this project is better than the original one. Now, granted, we didn't get to see a great deal of it other than what was proposed, uh, and we always are looking for new information as a project is delayed. One of the things we look at constantly is enrollment numbers, right-sizing the school, type of programs being offered, what the benefit is to the neighborhood, to the community, uh, it, consolidation efforts that are made. If students are being uh, sent to other school districts other than their own neighborhoods, uh, bringing them back, the impact of that. Special ed students coming back to their home districts and to their home schools uh, and uh, preparing space for that. Your project cannot proceed without the Department of uh, Emergency Services and Public Safety doing a review on safety. Uh, you may know in the past all you had to do was a sign-off that you have in fact taken into con in consideration the security infrastructure uh, program that we've initiated and that you've taken in, con in uh, consideration. That's not enough. 
Your application will go before them as well. They will review it, make recommendations on security that they think are important. They will be included in your uh, project and we will pay for them uh, as we are right now uh, with that. So we'll ensure that safety is the utmost protection. The other part of the application requires the Department of Public Health also sign off to ensure there are no water issues in the school. Not just yours, but throughout the state of Connecticut. That is another piece that we take into account and we work with you with that because we like to ensure uh, good drinking water, potable water within the school districts as well. So all of the concerns you have, are, of course, are concerns of ours. And to be very frank, I look at it that if I'm about an 80% investor, I have a great deal of investment in this project <laughs> that I would like to see it also uh, be one of the best. And each one of our projects uh, become better than the one before it. So uh, working together, we will do that. We have some some work to do in the next uh, few uh, months between now and October, and I'm sure we'll be successful in doing that. We have uh, a great staff. Bob Facito is here with us tonight, uh, who assisted in moving the application process along uh, and making sure the T's are, are crossed and the I's dotted. We have an outstanding architectural team who will work with your architects, who will work with your consulting staff and myself uh, to ensure that we move the project forward. So. Any concerns you have, we are accessible. Feel free to call us. Uh, I have visited the site often, and I'm very familiar with the project. So whatever I can do to assist and move the project along, I will. The one thing the mayor knows I do not like uh, is escalation costs. So the project will continue to <laughs> move forward. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, we'll see each other as the project moves forward. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank great, you. great event. Okay. Uh, going back to uh, superintendent's announcements. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> and uh, I do want to reiterate our appreciation for moving the project forward. Um, all of the commissioners, Mr. Mayor, uh, for your diligence in uh, working together in DAS for the approval. I want to make one comment in terms of well, some of the work that will be moving forward. Uh, as I said previously, I believe what makes a great school are the people. And I think our teachers and the leadership moving forward collectively to move forward in a very strategic manner to assure that we have outstanding teaching and learning going on in spite of the move that we will be making. I believe the people have made Wendell Cross what it is now, and I believe the people will continue to make Wendell Cross what it is as we transition to a new school in two years. I think it's critically important that um, we, we acknowledge and we value the fact that the teachers and the leadership will be working very hard to pack up the school, but we, we will have some supports there, we will have a plan, we will be working with all of you, and, uh, and we'll be communicating very shortly with the schools about the process and the timeline so that everyone will know that the school will be ready to start at St. Joe's uh, in the fall. And, and while that is a, sh a short period of time when you consider the amount of work that we have to do, I do believe the people are committed to making that happen. And I'll look forward to a very successful year. And uh, as we move into the, the um, swing space, and very excitingly, two years from now, into a brand new school that will accommodate the community and the growth of the community. So I do appreciate that happening. Thank you. I do have several announcements. We have quite a few wonderful things happening uh, all over the district. I'm sure I'm going to leave a few things out, but we had a wonderful meeting with the innovative design team to begin the process of moving forward with our academic academies, which will open in 2019-20. So the applications for the new academic academies will be available online on our website starting May 24th. Um, and at our recent parent meeting, we met with parents and our committee members who were interested in helping us design this uh, school within a school concept that will be available for students in grades four through eighth grade beginning next year. And then we continue to place some information online so that parents and community can learn more about what these academies are. And we will have at least one more community meetings for families to come by to learn what the academic academies will provide. Um, 
Primarily, it's going to provide an academically rigorous and challenging learning environment, innovative and creative, to stimulate the interest of students that are in the gifted and talented program, as well as those students whose parents want them to be involved in an academically rigorous program. It will be an application school. It will not be a lottery. And we anticipate that in this very first year, um, we will also have and prepare someone to lead that school within a school concept. So please stay tuned as we, as we continue to develop it and we roll out the application on May 24th. The fifth annual Family and Community Leadership Conference sponsored by the Waterbury Title I District Parent Advisory Council, the Naugatuck Valley Community College, Garup, Compact, and Waterbury Hospital was recently held. We had great attendance by our engaged parents and community members who were able to attend their choice of several workshops before the afternoon keynote address, which was given by Mr. Anthony Gay, and a subsequent award ceremony followed. Several Waterbury Public School students made it to the finals of the State of Connecticut Kids Court Junior Competition 2019. The topic this year was on bullying. The final competition was held on Tuesday, May 7th at the State Capitol. Students were competing for monetary prizes and medals as well as being recognized by the state government for their accomplishments. The event is sponsored by the Connecticut Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities. Elena Munoz and Dazlene Gonzalez both made it to the finals and represented Regan Elementary School. Diamar Bristol and Alicia De La Rosa also made it to the finals to represent Walsh Elementary School. Ms. De La Rosa placed second in her grade level. Congratulations to all of the students who worked very hard in their essays and presentations. Wallace Middle School talented and gifted students participated, participated in a program called the Stock Market Game. It was sponsored by SAFMA, SAFMA Foundation. Two Waterbury student teams were top finishers placing first and second at the middle school division of approximately 150 teams who participated. So we're really proud of our Wallace students. The top finishers were all eighth graders. First place went to Abriana Asipi and Esther Dulo, also known as the RB and SE team. The second place team consisted of Jordan Lavoie and Jalen Rivera and they were playing under the name J&J &J team. Wallace had other teams placing fifth, seventh, and 14th. A wonderful accomplishment for the students. Two of our high schools participated in the access phase of 2019 Girls Go Cyber Start program with uh, Waterbury Career Academy, capturing first place among eligible high schools in Connecticut. This was based on the number of students registered and engaged. And we also had Crosby High School placing third Waterbury Career Academy received a $1,000 gift certificate and 50 additional license, licenses for any Waterbury Career student, regardless of gender, to participate in the Cyber Start game phase that is currently underway. Nice. Top performing students in the game phase will be eligible to receive $500 scholarships, cybersecurity training from SANS, and also may be invited to participate in the National Capture the Flag competition in early June. Crosby High School students will receive $500 gift certificate as well. Crosby High School will receive that. The coordinator of the 2019 Connecticut Schools Go Cyber Start program, Jason Rosa, is also the Chief Information Security Officer at the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, and he is also a 1991 graduate of Kennedy High School. Waterbury Arts Magnet School received recognition as the 2019 College Success Award winner. The school is one of only 1,722 high schools throughout the country and one of 41 in Connecticut to receive this recognition. This recognition was achieved for high schools that have the largest number of students attending post-secondary education. Four students from Waterbury Public Schools received a $1,000 scholarship from Waterbury chapter of the Unico National. The students are Isabel Gaspard, Kennedy High School, William Mahoney, Kennedy High School, Gilliam Petrarca, Waterbury Career, Waterbury Arts Magnet, and Jalian Stolfi, 
Waterbury Arts Magnet. We're very proud of you students. Congratulations. Congratulations to our fine educators who are awarded grants toward furthering literacy projects in their schools from the Margaret M. Generali Foundation. I was privileged to attend that ceremony last night and very proud of the teachers and very appreciative to the foundation. Chase Taylor, a 19-year-old Waterbury Public Schools transition program student, was named a Connecticut arts hero after the publication of two books, The Letter Critters and The Letter Critter Biographies. I had the distinct pleasure of meeting Chase when I visited the program a couple of weeks ago. It's an awesome young man. Our district-wide talent showcase, Celebrating Community Through the Arts, will be held at the Palace Theater on Monday, May 20th. Doors will open at 5 p.m. with a show beginning at 6.30, and you may call the box office for tickets. It's free, though, right? It is free. <laughs> there is no charge. On Wednesday, May 22nd, our district will honor 51 students from all of our schools in the annual Superintendent Student Recognition Awards. The program begins at 6 p.m. at Kennedy High School. General Raleigh School's annual Memorial Day commemoration will be held on Friday, May 24th. If it rains, it's going to be on May 29th. The ceremony begins at 9 a.m. The grade five students and teachers will gather in front of the school, then proceed to East Forms Cemetery. The service commemorates the lives of 24 soldiers who were buried at this site from the Re Revolutionary War, War of 1812, Civil War, and World War I. Special recognition will be given to two unknown French soldiers who marched with General uh, Rochambeau on his journey to meet General George Washington in 1781. On Wednesday, May 29th, our district will celebrate Waterbury Public Schools Educators of Excellence at a ceremony at Crosby High School beginning at 4.30 p.m. We will be honoring teachers from each of our campuses along with three paraprofessionals, one Administrator of the Year, and one Non-Academic Support Person of the Year, as well as announcing our selection of Waterbury Teacher of the Year. Kennedy High School is having their annual Community Day on Saturday, May 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Crosby High School's annual Community Day, which will be Saturday, June the 1st, um, from 12 to 3. This one is going to be at Crosby High School. Uh, there are great chances for community to come out and to join and to gain access to community providers, as well as an opportunity to have great fun. This will conclude our special announcements for today. Any questions for superintendent? I think the district, we could be out every night this week, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Vice no. President. Yes, just real quickly. Um, excellent report is long, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the, in the district. Two things, one is that Chase Taylor, who is a graduate of Waterbury Career Academy and his two books. Um, I know that, you know, there's a, they're trying to purchase those books to have them distributed uh, for free for our Title I parents. So I know it's either Pat or Linda Ritter Barron, one of the two are trying to purchase those books um, so that we can have them in the district. We're very proud of Chase. Um, also, I just want to comment just real quickly, uh, the Parent and Community Leadership Conference was, was excellent, but what I would like to see, uh, Dr. Ruffin, is can we get the stats on how many, how many enrolled and how many attended? Okay, I think they have that information, as well as uh, to share what the feedback was from the, uh, from the conference, if you could. Sure. All right? And that's it. Thank you, Madam President. Any other questions? Okay, we'll continue. I just want to say happy Memorial Day. We won't see you at the end of the month, and let's remember the reason we celebrate Memorial Day for all the brave men and women uh, who fought for our country and remind us of the true meaning of democracy uh, as, we, um, as we embrace our citizenship. Thank you. Um, consent calendar. Can I have a motion? Oh. First of all, does anybody, would anybody like to remove anything from the consent calendar? Seeing none, okay. I'll read it first. 
I'll read it first, and then we'll do a motion. <laughs> 9.1, request approval of the revised 2019-2020 school year calendar. 9.2, acceptance of the Duggan School Project. State project number 151-0252 as complete. 9.3, use of school facilities by school organizations and or city departments. 9.4, use of school facilities by outside organizations and or waiver requests. Motion to approve the consent calendar is read. Second. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed of same, motion carries, thank you. Uh, there were no items removed from the consent calendar. Uh, Commissioner Hernandez, Committee on Grievances. Ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Grievances recommend that the Waterbury Board of Education deny WTA Grievance 1819-23 heard by the Committee on June 7, 2019. Second. Discussion? We get detail. Vice President uh, Harvey. Details on yeah. this grievance, please. If you may summarize, please. I am getting there. Okay. Department leadership position. Uh, the grievant had assumed the responsibility of acting department chair since the department of the previous chair as of January 2019. He has met the criteria of Article 9, Section 4 of the WTA CBA. The grievant had not received the contract stipend according to Article 9, Section 2. Um, he requested that us uh, follow in specific regard without denial. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. We denied his. Um, Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. 11.2. Commissioner Hernandez. Ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Grievances recommends the Waterbury Board of Education uphold WTA Grievance 1819-24 heard by the committee on June 7, 2019. The remedy shall be that the written letter of discipline will be removed from the employee's file and further that the certificate of completion of professional development remain in the file. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Second. Please summarize. Okay. The grievant had been issued a written letter of discipline without just cause and violation of rights outlined in the accordance with Article 291A of the 1619 Collective Bargaining Agreement between the Union and the Board of Education. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, going on to number 13. Motion to receive in place. Motion. motion to receive in place on file. Superintendent's notification of the board. Items uh, 13.1 through 13.4. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Uh, 14. Unfinished business of preceding meeting only. Number 15, other unfinished new and miscellaneous business. Commissioner Adorno. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to um, just mention uh, that the Autism Speaks Walk is coming up uh, for Waterbury on Saturday, June 1st at Library Park. We are celebrating um, their 10th year uh, anniversary this year. Uh, my son Julian is here. Hey, Julian. Um, so we're just encouraging, I know there's a lot of schools that do participate, they volunteer, they create their own team, so I'm just encouraging um, everyone, I mean, we, we get a really good, decent crowd for a Thank few you. thousand dollars, a couple um, of the commissioners have attended, so I welcome you guys and, and I invite you guys so you could, you know, happily uh, join my son's team um, or create our own, that, that would be great <laughs> if you could just make an appearance, it's really appreciated. So it is open to the public, free, it's, uh, you know, sensory friendly. Um, and so we just invite you guys again. It's Saturday, June 1st from 9 to 1 at Library Park. Commissioner Hernandez. I was told by my colleague that I said um, these grievances were on June 7th. I apologize. It was May 7th. Okay. For the record. <laughs> For the record. Duly noted, Commissioner. Okay. And best of luck to your team. Are you going to win? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. 
I guess we're 15. Number 15, other unfinished new and miscellaneous business. Uh, and we do have executive session. So can I have a motion, please? A motion to adjourn? No, no executive sorry, session. Sorry, sorry. Executive. sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Motion to convene into executive session for discussion concerning the appointment, employment, performance, evaluation, health, or dismissal of a public officer or employee. Second. Second. Discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Motion carries. We'll be going into the uh, ante room there.